And so here it is, my latest financial mistake. It's a 2006 Mercedes-Benz 320 ML. So why on earth did I think buying this was a good idea, considering I've got the press car, I've got the farm find, I've got my grey Jetta coupe, I've got my silver Jetta coupe. Um, why did I think buying another car was a good idea? Well, truthfully, <laughs> It was cheap. I'd been stalking it on Facebook for quite a while. And to be honest, I need to raise some cash. And I looked at this and thought, there's a couple of jobs on here which should be a really easy fix that I can turn this around for some top money to be able to pile that money back into the project and get all of the channel's project cars back on track. So here it is. What do we think? Um, it's a 2006 320 ML Sport in black. Now this is the second generation of the Mercedes ML. The first ones when they came out were really the first sort of soccer mum SUV if you will. Um, and maybe this isn't too far from its roots but the first one was notoriously unreliable. In the UK here it came absolutely rock bottom in the JD Power survey for reliability and I'm hoping that Mercedes-Benz learnt their lessons with this one. But thankfully, they didn't learn too many lessons because I managed to pick this one up really cheap because it's got a number of faults with it. But taking a look at it, what have we got? Here we are. So inside, first thing you notice, we've got these suede and leather seats uh, or Alcantara. I don't even know what it is, but you can see it's very, very worn. So we're going to have to look at that. The back isn't too bad, but yeah, these this is quite common on these. Now, as we sit inside, now as I turn the ignition on, so far, so good. As you can see, I've driven eight miles to get here today. As we turn the ignition on, okay, so it starts, right, here we go. ESP, defective, visit workshop, brake wear, visit workshop. ABS defective, visit workshop. Run flat indicator unavailable. Obviously the engine management light has come on, but I drive Volkswagen, so I'm used to that. Okay, so we are back here. So as you can see, there's a number of these, uh, of these fault codes that are obviously stored in here that we're gonna have to take a look at and see exactly what the problem with it is. Now, the sat-nav doesn't appear to be working either. So, we've got audio, video, no video. Nav, um, okay, I need to find A, a nav disc, and B, decide where it goes. Then we've got telephone. Please insert telephone. Oh, okay, so it's gonna be one of these, isn't it? So, as we look here, in the armrest, okay, I've got some receipts and stuff from the previous owner. But we've got, um, yeah, one of those. So I'm guessing you plug a Nokia of some description in, maybe a Motorola, and okay, that's just no good, is it? Then as we look at the rest of it, uh, we've got map. Again, insert DVD, we're back there again. Oh, okay. Service. Okay, so we've got Bluetooth here. Okay, this could change things. Now, is it gonna find my phone? If it says iPhone, we're laughing. If it doesn't, I might have to invest. Oh, oh, iPhone, hold on. Hold on. This could change things dramatically. Um, let's go with one, two, three, four zeros, classic. Okay, so that should be connected now. Um, okay, right, we're gonna have a play with that later. What else have we got in here? So, the passenger seat, exactly the same. Um, obviously that's had many miles of arses sat in that, so that's a bit worn. The back is, uh, the back's just a bit dirty, to be honest, it's quite, it's quite spacious in the back actually. It's a good old family truck. Now, as we look here, back at the dash, we can see that we've got, let's have a quick look. Um, settings to reset, press reset for, I don't know what that is, compass cool okay radio 
miles. Here we go. So 159,000 miles on this Mercedes-Benz. Um, so as you can see, we've got ourselves 160,000 mile Mercedes. Guys, I really need my head looking at if I thought this was a good idea. But still, we're here. We've bought it. Let's have a quick look under the engine bay or under the bonnet at the engine. One of the things I noticed when I drove this home was it went into limp mode. Now, from what I've been led to believe, there's a problem with these that is, um, there's like a Y piece under here that that causes the problems because it's got two sensors in and one of those or two of those breaks down and um, basically the engine doesn't run right. It's a V6, I'm guessing one is the intake for one side, one's the other. As we take a look here, you can see it's this piece. Um, and from what I've been told, one of these sensors is faulty and um, that's not great. And of course, we've also got this missing here. Now, I don't want to touch that too closely because that's the turbo. So um, yeah, we'll take a look at that. But basically this piece needs to be replaced because from what I've been told, these sensors don't come separately or they're just ridiculously expensive, but it seems to be the thing to do is to replace this. Um, you'll notice there's no engine cover. And that's because obviously the guy's been in here looking at this and decided with all of these faults and the fact that the MOT is due in a couple of days, he really didn't want to get involved in this. Oh, and I've just noticed the clips on the grill are damaged as well. Okay, I'm sure we can fix that. That is so far what looks like is wrong with this Mercedes. So it's not too bad. Uh, generally speaking, bodywork wise, if you look here, that parking sensor has dropped back into its hole. So we're going to need to sort that out. There's a couple of scuffs and little scrapes around it, but generally speaking, it's quite clean. Let me just take the key out of there. I don't want to lock myself out of this truck because I've only got the one key. So I might want to think about getting a second one cut made. I don't know. They've got this weird type of digital key. So we'll see. We'll see if it's possible. Hopefully it's not main dealer only. I'm sure there's loads of places out there that can do it. So as we go back to looking at this, we've got, yeah, there's just a couple of little bumps, little car park things, but then again, it is a massive truck. The wheels, they're okay. Obviously, they've got some flaky paint, as you'd expect at this sort of age. Around the back here, again, there's a couple of small little nicks, but not much. I mean, this bit here, hopefully a lot of that will polish out. A little bit missing there, we might have to just touch that in. But generally speaking it's quite a nice truck. If I'm allowed to call it a truck, that is. Um, I don't know, is it? Let me know in the comments what you think. Is it a truck? Is it not a truck? It's a 4x4, an SUV, a soccer mum's car. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Now, one last place we haven't checked is the boot. So, as I pop this open, you can see we've got a couple of bits and pieces in here. So we've got, uh, first of all, a sparkly pink bag. That's not mine. Um, that was left in by the previous owner. We've got some bits and pieces from Autodoc. Uh, there's some springs for a Mark II. And we've got this box here, which was a nice delivery from the guys at Max Peding Rods, which is something that we really need to fix this car. So I'm gonna get this back to the barn. It's only around the corner. And yeah, let's let's get in and let's take a look. Maybe we'll plug it in. Maybe we'll clear some codes. Either way, hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have this thing running a bit better. Now I've just seen Sam and Ed drive past. So let's get this thing started and let's head back to the barn. Okay, so as I'm driving it, we've had some more uh, warning lights come up on the dash. So obviously we know about the ESP. There we go, so we got some bulbs out. What a surprise. So we'll have a look at those. That ABS defective scares me a little bit. I'm hoping it's just a sensor and not gonna cost too much money to fix. So that's all the codes cleared. So we're gonna need to fire it back up and then see what comes back. Now this goes into limp mode, so it can be quite hard to drive this because you put your foot down, there's absolutely nothing. Now, the problem with this, from looking at the codes and speaking to the guy that I bought this off, um, there's a sensor in the um, 
like there's an airflow sensor that's gone faulty. Now, they come as part of this sort of Y piece, um, which has two sensors, one for each bank of the engine, I guess, because it's a V6. Um, and they're quite a common fault on these, and the parts are readily available online. Now, you can either go to Mercedes, and it's about 350, 400 pounds from what I've been told, or you can have a look on eBay or Amazon. They're all over the place, and you're looking around about 190 to 200 pounds for one of those. But of course, I went to our friends at Max Peeding Rods um, who have this on their site and it's listed at £156. But using the discount code MARK2GOLF in the checkout, it actually came in at £126. So what a bargain. So this is the box that turned up. Again, free delivery took like two days to arrive. So um, really great service. And you can see here, again, they love um, sending these little booklets out, but it's really well packed with some weird cut up foam. Um, let's get rid of those. And as we can see in here, this is what we're really here for. So we can see here, this is the replacement part. Um, now, again, with all of the Max Peeling Rod stuff, it's got all of the clips. So it's got new Jubilee clips. As you can see here on this one, that's been silicon sealed up. Um, that's kind of cracked around there as well. Um, so yeah, this is obviously Simbedder days and one of these, uh, one of these sensors has gone down in here. So this is a really easy job you can do at home. It takes about five minutes if that to switch over. So you've got three Jubilee clips to undo, one either side and then one on the turbo here. So make sure that the turbo's had a chance to cool down if you've been driving it. But literally, once you've undone these, you've got the two clips on the sensors either side just to pop off. And then once you've done that, underneath, there's a breather that you just need to unplug. So you lift it up and it's just underneath there. So with that off, out with the old one, and then the new one can just clip back into place. Again, it's just the reverse of what you've just done. So both Jubilee clips either side, one on the turbo, breather back in and then you've got your two clips on your sensors and you're good to go. Okay so with that new Y-pipe fitted it is a lot better. So yeah we've got no limp mode it pulls all the way up to 70 miles an hour. Now it's not as quick as I thought it was going to be but then again it is a two and a half ton 4x4 so look for 126 pounds we have fixed the limp mode problem so um yeah the engine management light's still on but we're going to need to scan that and uh clear the code but look 126 pounds from max peeding rods has fixed this faulty mercedes ml so there are some other bits that we need to do so we've got to look at the brake pad wear indicator now the brake pads themselves are in really good condition they look pretty recent so i'm guessing it's a broken wire or maybe it just wasn't fitted correctly or yeah look we'll take a look we'll pop the wheel off and see what's what now we've also got an abs problem as well and it looks like it's the front speed sensor so we've got a problem with the abs sensor on i think it's the driver's side so we're gonna have to order a new one of those but look so far we've got the running issue sorted and that was the main thing that was the thing that really worried me um so look the engine is good the the this car runs really well and it's um yeah it's, it's a nice little runner so apparently it was serviced or it's got four and a half thousand miles till it needs servicing again so look we might do an oil and filter on this because it can't hurt but look 126 pounds later and we've got this thing running and driving as it should so this was the cheapest running and driving mercedes ml in the uk um i think the second cheapest one or the absolutely cheapest one was a parts car had loads of bits missing um didn't have any mot certainly wasn't going back on the road anytime soon so this car was an absolute bargain and I told you I'd been stalking it on Facebook for a couple of months. Now, originally he had it up for sale for £2,000 with a really short MOT, um, just, needing that, um, just needing that sort of Y piece replaced. And I went away on holiday and I thought, do you know what, I'm gonna buy that. I need to buy and sell some cars to make a bit of cash. And that looks like a really great contender. It's a lot of car for the money. And yeah, I think there's a good quick profit to make in that. So I absolutely have my eye on this. And I thought I'll wait till he lists it up again. Um, because um, it'd been up once or twice before and hadn't sold. And I thought if it sold, it sold. 
But then I saw it the other morning, straight away, thousand pounds, take it away, no offers, and I had to jump on it. So yes, this Mercedes ML 320 was only one thousand pounds. So guys, it was an absolute bargain. Now with all of the change in regulations coming up in the UK around towing, this would be a great tow vehicle. So yes, I've got a car trailer. This has got a detachable tow bar, but part of the reason that I'm skint, I've gone and bought myself a recovery truck. So this was, uh, this was another just random decision, um, but it turned out, you know, it's gonna be good to tow the track car around. And if I'm buying and selling some battered old cars that kind of need some attention, then I can always just throw them on the back of the truck and, uh, and yeah, it's good to go. So guys, look, I think I'm gonna leave it there. Thanks ever so much for watching. Remember to press the like button and subscribe to the channel if you like this video. Um, this is a barn club video, so not much Mark II action. In fact, none at all. So um, guys, keep an eye on the channel for more Mark II action, but also we're gonna revisit this ML and get it finished off and ready for an MOT. So guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.